that are inspired by the biological brain. And uh, there's a lot of work done in the last three decades trying to replicate some level of intelligence and uh, training those models. And uh, they have been used for a number of uh, problems that include speech recognition, gesture recognition, uh, financial prediction, and other time series prediction problems. And uh, in the past, we have uh, used them for predicting uh, the track of uh, tropical cyclones, the future track, and also the wind intensity for the South Pacific and the South Indian Ocean. So we've applied them to the area of uh, uh, cyclones. And there hasn't been much work done uh, where neural networks has been used for, for cyclones. And, uh, uh, very little work. Like we are we are doing some some work, and that is the reason we are motivated to use them. The reason we would like to use them is because they have shown to be very good in uh, modeling temporal sequences. And uh, below is a simple uh, uh, architecture of a feed code in a recurrent neural network. These are the two major neural network models used for. Of, uh, such applications. Uh, the recurrent neural network shown on the left and uh, on the right is uh, the recurrent neural network unfolded in time. These are just the models. And uh, the problem with neural networks is about training them. So basically, you have a model which is this uh, neural network, and it could have an input hidden layer and output layer. The input layer could be the weight intensity of the tropical cyclone, or it could be the latitude and the longitude information, things like that. And the output layer would be the one step ahead, what is that information. So there's a lot of data that it uh, trains from. So uh, neural networks, there are a lot of weighted connections. These are all these connections, and we need to train them based on the data. So it's with database optimization. And uh, recent, uh, our group, we have done a lot of work in neuro, neuro evolution for the last three or four years. You do a simple uh, Google search on neuro evolution, you will find some of the papers from our group. Um, uh, the, what is neuro evolution? So the term evolution there is uh, important because evolution has motivated the whole field of evolutionary computation. Evolutionary computation is where you use uh, models or, or a theory such as Darwin's theory of evolution and then you develop uh, some algorithms based on those theories and uh, use it to, for optimization. And the optimization problem is training the neural network. And uh, uh, evolutionary computation is not just used for uh, neuroevolution, but there are other applications such as troubling sense man problem and many other optimization problems. Um, and one uh, such uh, popular tool for neuroevolution is cooperative neuroevolution. This is what our group is working in TV. And it's uh, for dividing the larger problem into subcomponents. So the bigger training problem is divided into subcomponents and then we train the different specific uh, weights. And uh, there's just some of the references uh, where we have published uh, work in the past, uh, where we proposed several instances of cooperative neuroevolution for time series prediction. And uh, the paper published in Neurocomputing is quite popular now. Uh, just received about 50 citations and uh, the rest of the papers and, uh, are also there where we use uh, these models for time series prediction. Excuse me. Um, so, uh, uh, the, the, now we go into the problem. As you can see, and uh, this is a, I'm sure that you guys uh, can make better, <laughs> plot better diagrams than this with those Arc GIS and all those quite uh, colorful tools that I've been seeing. So uh, this was developed by one of uh, my courses. Uh, 
So this is just a, the text of the, the tropical cyclone from 1980 to 2012. And uh, what is the problem? Uh, it is, uh, we are not predicting the wind intensity, but it's a bit uh, different than that. We are predicting the change of that wind intensity, which is rapid intensification. So we want a model that can, when a cyclone begins, or during the, when there's a cyclone is going on, the model will predict if the cyclone will rapidly intensify which means that it increases uh, the maximum uh, winds by 30 knots in a 24-hour period. So uh, the, the method, of course, we, as I discussed, we use for evolutionary recurrent neural networks. And we approach the, the problem into two, into two phases. First is, we view it as a classification problem where the, the model, the neural network, will classify that uh, during a cyclone it will say that with uh, whether there will be a rapid intensification case or not a rapid intensification case in the next 24 hours. So if the model is live and there's a live cyclone, basically if you check it with the model it will tell, okay, there are, maybe it will just say a yes or a no. If that in the next 24 hours there will be a rapid <coughs> intensification or not. And the phase two is, if there is a rapid intensification, then it will tell by how many knots the cyclone will rapidly intensify. So the phase one is not that challenging compared to phase two. And I will show you the results for those. So, uh, <coughs> We've done uh, numerous uh, experimentation on this, and we've tried different uh, neural network architectures, we've tried uh, different <coughs> input, which is not just the wind intensity, but latitude, longitude, uh, information as well for the input, and then we tried to predict the rapid intensification strength, and in one instance we tried the wind intensity, and another one that I don't have the diagram now, we also look at the month of the cyclone as the input. Uh, so this is basically the algorithm that trains the, the neural network. It could be, there can be any algorithm used for training the neural network, but we used the one that is developed by a group as it performed fairly well with comparison to previous algorithms. So uh, basically the experimental setup uh, in, for the South Pacific, uh, we have uh, uh, 219 cyclones in the training set. So we divide the cyclones into a training set and a test set, and 71 cyclones in the test set. Uh, we also have something similar for the Indian Ocean. But, uh, it missed the slide, sorry. But, uh, it is in the paper. Actually, so uh, I'm sure this is a user conference. Most of you are but we thinking of it. Okay, this, uh, this software and all that, and then where do we get the software to do more work? So um, our group, we are releasing a computational intelligence framework. Uh, this is basically a pigeon made product. It's called Smart Below, and uh, the link is here. And uh, you can contact me and get the link, and uh, basically, Smart Below has a, a number of tools that we developed in the last 10 years, all in C++ from scratch, and evolutionary computation, neural computation, and all our bundle and some data sets as well. So uh, this can be used in a wide range of data science and analytics uh, uh, for the Um, by, by those who do research in this area. So uh, performance evaluation, how do we evaluate how good the neural network uh, model is in terms of predicting the future occurrence of rapid intensification? There's a root mean squared error or mean absolute error. So the phase one, uh, first we look at the, the different number of hidden neurons 
and the model and uh, for the different two different problems, the South Indian Ocean and the South Pacific Ocean. Uh, basically, the uh, model has been very effective in uh, predicting uh, uh, the occurrence of uh, rapid intensification with uh, almost a 97% uh, accuracy on unseen data, which means that this can be <coughs> deployed in uh, weather stations and there can be cloud computing tools and so on uh, to, to do this. And uh, we have some graphs here about some analysis of the number of rapid intensification. Uh, it's not very clear here, but what we learned is that this is a, the graph that shows uh, the duration of the cyclones in the last, uh, let's say, 20 years. And then for each of those cyclones, how many rapid intensification cases were there in green? Uh, if you look here. So here you can see that uh, there is one cyclone that the duration was uh, less than 50, but it had uh, about 9 rapid intensification. So it is not, from our analysis, we found that it is not that uh, the cyclone, uh, if the cyclone is uh, lengthy, then there will be most rapid, rapid intensification. Sometimes, sometimes for shorter cyclones, there are most rapid intensification cases. So uh, we did a number of uh, analysis to improve on the, the phase two, which is the prediction of uh, the intensity of rapid intensification using wind as the input, wind and track, and wind as the demand. And we conclude basically from this results at the root mean square error that the wind uh, information is good enough to determine the prediction of rapid intensification. And uh, the trick in the month information is not uh, really needed or it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of rapid intensification of cyclones. And uh, this is actually a sample run uh, of the of one case where all the rapid intensification is predicted in the training set so the actual is uh, green and the predictors is red and this is of the test set so the neural network has been this accurate in predicting the rapid intensification with the green is uh, the actual and the predicted is the red <coughs> so uh, but uh, we are not very I mean, we are not fully satisfied with the results in the prediction of the intensity of rapid intensification. We think that we can improve on this, and uh, how we can improve is if we have more information, that means the, the cyclones are uh, recorded every two hours or three hours, but we have data from uh, the JTWC, I uh, forget that. Uh, for the military site that it is recorded every six hours. So if we have two hours or if we recorded every hour, then we'll have more information to record rapid intensification. And other things we need, humidity, pressure, sea surface temperature, and so on. Maybe we need to do more research. And this could be implemented using uh, online web services, mobile applications could be developed for awareness and word warning, and so on. And uh, Basically, we, there is uh, more accuracy desired in future work, and we need more data points, and we need to collaborate more on this project. And the work uh, that is uh, done uh, for prediction of track, prediction of wind intensity, and even this, we have presented this here in Japan, uh, Asia, <coughs> and Istanbul last week. Uh, our group has taken uh, this presentations to those conferences in, in the area of neural networks and computational intelligence. So uh, basically the, the publication, uh, if you want, you can see my profile on this HD, you can download the paper, and uh, the second review is uh, uh, transactions on geoscience and remote sensing. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think um, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, see Dr. Chandra uh, your own time and uh, ask your questions.
we'll go on to the next uh, presenter. Now, please uh, put your hands together. Thank you.